Welcome to Breaking the Line, the ECNL podcast, a bi-weekly look at all things related to the growing elite clubs nationally, the ECNL. For more information on the ECNL, visit us at www.theecnl.com. Now, here's your host for Breaking the Line, the ECNL podcast, former U.S. soccer press officer and longtime soccer broadcaster, Dean Linky. I am Dean Linky, but I know when to step aside and let my superstar guests introduce themselves. This is who is on this week's show. Hi, this is Savannah King with Slimers FC. And this is Faith George, also a Slimers FC. Last week, our team won the ECNL U18 and 19 Girls National Championship, and Faith scored the winning goal. And Savvy shut down the Hawks' key forward. Join Dean Linky, Faith, and me on this week's edition of Breaking the Line, the ECNL podcast. What a great opportunity to spend time with two of the premier athletes in the the ECNL helping the Slammers win the U18 U19 Girls National Championship game. Savannah King, known as Savvy, is headed to play for Anson Dorrance and the University of North Carolina. Faith George, the daughter of Sam George, who won a national championship under Ziggy Schmidt at UCLA, is headed to Southern Cal to play for the Trojans. You'll hear the story of Savvy King and Faith George on this week's edition of Breaking the Line, the ECNL podcast. And it starts after this message from the ECNL. As the game continues to evolve in the United States, the ECNL remains the standard of excellence in youth soccer. The Elite Clubs National League has grown to include over 200 clubs and nearly 50,000 players across the country, with a robust competition platform for teams, educational resources for coaches and clubs, and unparalleled identification and development opportunities for players. Alongside its member clubs, collaborating to create a better future, the ECNL continues to raise the game every day. The ECNL is more than a league. Welcome back to Breaking the Line, the ECNL podcast. Once again, here's Dean. One family committed to excellence that has long been the model for Slammers FC, one of the premier youth soccer clubs in the country. Led by the Quarry Brothers out of Lebanon, Slammers FC have won titles for boys and girls at multiple levels. And at the U18-19 ECNL Girls National Championship, they won their 19th overall. That includes all leagues and they did it by knocking off a very good team in the Michigan Hawks by a score of two to zero with the Corey brothers looking on their head coach was Shane Gordon and two of the stars in that game were Faith George who scored both of the goals in the two zero win and Savannah King who shut down the very best forward perhaps in the entire tournament for the Michigan Hawks Olivia Thomas helping them pitch a shutout and again earn the 2023 U18-19 ECNL Girls National Championship. And as you just heard in the open, both of these outstanding players are with us today on Breaking the Line, the ECNL podcast. Once again, they are Savannah King, known as Savvy. Hi, Savvy. Hi. And the player with the brace in the national championship game, Faith George. Hi, Faith. Hi, Dean. All right, well, let's get right into it. Obviously, winning a national championship doesn't happen every day. It's hard to do. It's a big-time process. There's a lot of sweat equity in there, not just with you, but with your family. We'll start with you, Faith George, because you had the game winner. What does it mean to be a national champion? Uh, It means everything. My dad was a national champion at UCLA, so it was just kind of carrying on the family legacy of the Georgias being dominant in the soccer world, so it was really cool to add a national championship to my family's name. Great answer. Savvy King. Same question. What's it mean to be a national champion? Oh my gosh, it means the world. I was new to Slammers this year, and I remember talking to Shane when I was making the move, and uh, we talked a lot about winning a national championship this year and how much that it would mean to the club and to us. So it just meant the world to be able to do that with the trophy at the end. Faith, you certainly understand the importance of chemistry. Both of you will see it at the next level. We're going to tell everybody where you guys are playing college in a moment because I think you're both headed there even in the next couple of days. It's that quick where you'll be joining your colleges. But Faith, when you heard Savvy was coming into the team, knowing her U.S. national team pedigree with the youth team, how did the team take her in? I always knew the team as well. So, like, I think I came in 
a couple days before Savvy, but I just remember seeing her name pop up in the chat and I was like, oh my gosh, this is a team that's going to win a national championship. Like, I think our back line was great, but Savvy definitely played a huge role in everything we did this season. So I was really excited to see her come onto the team. And Savvy, talk about what it was like, you know, how they accepted you. Obviously, you're a great player, but just talk about the chemistry and the way they received you. It was amazing. Everyone had open arms and the team chemistry just at the beginning, even when I was there, was just amazing. And I feel like everyone really clicked, everyone that came into the team, because I think there was a lot of us that were like newer to the club so it was great it I felt like family right away and I was super happy that I made the switch it may not be right in front of you but to the best of your recollection can you break down the tournament what teams you beat kind of in the order I don't know if you remember who you played each day who wants to jump in there to say you know hey on this day we we won this game and then we moved on to the final we already know you beat the Michigan Hawks in the final do you know the other games I don't know the first one but I think it was United Football Alliance second game and then Concord Fire was the third game and then it was Hawks but I can't remember it was crossfire premiere the first game okay awesome those were all the wins and i heard the concord game was a battle like a true true test can you talk about that game it was one of those games where i felt like we didn't have possession at all so both of our goals kind of came from more so counterattack moments whereas in the hawks game i felt like we were the dominant team with possession so concord it was nerve-wracking from a standpoint of we were on defense for a majority of the game so it was like sitting back and savvy did a fantastic job that game shutting down their forward and once again so it was just a matter of like anchoring the back line and making sure our goalkeeper did well our goalkeeper lived did amazing that game as well so it was just it was it was a brutal game yeah it was definitely like a championship game like before a championship game like we knew going into it how good Concord was and how dominant they were in their like region of the league so we knew going in that was going to be a battle and I think that we were able to come out on top, but it was definitely a great game and a good confidence boost going into the final. I mentioned it, Olivia Thomas, and you did an amazing job guarding her, and now she's going to be your teammate as you're headed to the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill. Did you have any chats out there before the game or during the game or after the game? Did you talk to her at all? Yeah, so I had seen her like a few days prior. I think it was right before we played Total Football Academy. And we were like talking about how crazy it would be if we like played in the final because we were both going into UNC a little bit later because we both wanted to play in playoffs. And so when I saw that we are on different side of the brackets, I was just like, that would be crazy if we ended up playing each other in the final. So I think we, we talked about it going into it a couple of days before. And then when I saw that they had beat Real Colorado in their semis, I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to be crazy. And it was super good being able to see her again because I hadn't seen her for a while, but it's going to be super fun. It's always competitive playing against her. We said good luck before the game, but obviously it's like competitive time. So it's not like super like chatty chatty but I saw her after the game too and I'm just super excited to have the next four with her and to keep pushing each other on the field. Faith George is headed to play at Southern Cal we'll get into that in a moment I want to stay with the game though Faith I thought you were outstanding I mean really from the start I thought your ability on the right side then on the left side then the ability to cut in I felt like you bossed that game early and deserved the goal it just seemed like you had a little extra pep in your step you felt it didn't you Faith? Yeah, I did. I felt good the whole tournament. It's a testament to my preparation when they think like I came into nationals knowing that I wanted to win, like I was going to do whatever it took to win. So I think for that game, it was just a matter of, for me at least, not letting the moment get too big and just staying calm and realizing that it's not just another game, but at the end of the day, it's soccer. Like I've been doing it my whole life. So it was just staying calm. And then when the ball came to me, realizing that everyone around me on the other team was nervous. So I took advantage of that and just tried to do what I was good at and not do anything like that's not me as a player and it just worked out in my favor and I ended up with two goals and it was not necessarily lucky, but I do think we were lucky to get the goal and everything. So it was just, it was good. Exciting. You played just, I mean, perfect. I thought really from the start and then, you know, everybody I thought was really good, but I do want to point out the right back Leonard who I thought was really effective. Can you comment on her play savvy? I thought she was really good back there. Peyton has been, is a great defender and I, I've loved playing with her in the back. Normally it's her in center and me on the outside. So we did a little swap, but I love playing with Peyton. I thought she did an absolutely amazing job. She took on 
that position head on. And I thought that she played so great. And like, I think that she should explore being an outside back because she was great on the wing out there. What is it like, Faith, when you're playing with players that some of them get caps for U.S. youth national teams, but pretty much everybody on both rosters, probably most of the games, but definitely in the final is going to a prominent D1 school. I mean, these are players that you're maybe you've already gone up against before, but you know, you're going to go up perhaps against them again when you enter college. It honestly just speaks a lot to the ECNL's like level of getting girls recruited, but it's like looking at these girls, I look at them and they're like me going to college. Like a lot of the girls that at least we played against for Hawks didn't have those national team caps where I think Savvy and Shay on our teams were the only two that did. So it was just cool, like stepping onto a field where everyone was really good, going to good division one level schools and then being able to play at a high level. It was like, it kind of felt like a college game maybe not quite as intense as a college game, but like with the level of talent that was on the field, it felt to me like a college game. So it was just really cool to play in that environment. This first segment, let's stay with the qualities of the ECNL. I call a lot of college games and have called college games for almost 30 years now. And since the emergence of the ECNL on the girls game, I mean, the parody has changed. As you know, Sav, you're going to a place that normally won trophies like books on a bookshelf and they haven't won since 2012. You're obviously hoping to change that. But I feel like part of that is the quality of the ECNL. It's allowed so many college programs to be great, like Southern Cal, where Faith George is going and a lot of other teams on the West Coast and the Midwest. The SEC is starting to get dominant as well. I give the ECNL a lot of credit for that. What do you think of how the ECNL helped you develop as a player? You go first, Miss King, and then we'll go to Miss George. I think that the ECNL is just an amazing league that really prepares you for college. I think that it gives you so many opportunities to get committed to a college and to perform and play with the best people in the country, which I think is amazing. And you can't really ask for any more, but I think that it's so cool. Like, especially with these types of tournaments, like with showcases and playoffs, how like teams from across the country can come together and play against each other, which I think is so cool. Cause I love being able to see everyone from different States all in one place and being able to play each other, I think is just, it's amazing. And the travel portion of it, And being able to like meet new people and play against new people is just, is the best and really helps prepare you for college. For me, at least like the ECNL, it was just huge with like exposure and everything and like kind of learning to deal with nerves when college coaches were watching you and everything. So that helped a lot. And then to add on to what Sally said, like traveling across the country have been some of my best memories of like my childhood and like playing against girls that I wouldn't ever really normally play against in Southern California So it was like going to New Jersey and playing against girls from over there. It's just like a different environment. Like the grass is longer in New Jersey and things like that, that you're going to have to deal with in college. So it was like learning how to handle different situations that the ECNL presented have prepared me so well to step in at the next level and do well. Two great answers. I shouldn't be surprised that two great athletes are also two great interviews. This is outstanding as we are with Slammers FC. They won the U18-19 ECNL Girls National Championship, knocking off the Michigan Hawks. We're with Savannah King and Faith George. We're going to take a break and hear from the sponsors of the ECNL. and we'll be back with more Savannah King and Faith George. Nike is a proud sponsor of ECNL Girls. Nothing can stop what we can do together to bring positive change to our communities. You can't stop sport because hashtag you can't stop our voices. Follow Nike on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Huddle is a proud partner of Breaking the Line, the ECNL podcast. Huddle's powerful yet intuitive solutions make it easy for coaches and athletes to be at their best. And now it's more affordable than ever. All ECNL clubs can get 25% off on Huddle and Huddle Assist, the game breakdown solution. Clubs of 10 teams or more can take advantage of the exclusive ECNL club package pricing. This bundle includes Huddle and Huddle Assist for every team and makes your club eligible for Huddle Focus Flex the all-new portable smart camera with full huddle integration at one affordable price. You can bring the best end-to-end performance analysis platform for soccer today. Just go to huddle.com slash pricing slash ECNL. That's huddle, H-U-D-L dot com slash pricing slash ECNL. Soccer.com is proud to partner with the ECNL to support the continued development of soccer in the U.S. at the highest levels. We've been delivering quality soccer equipment and apparel to players, fans, and coaches since 1984. 
living and breathing the beautiful game ourselves, our goal at Soccer.com is to inspire you to play better, cheer louder, and have more fun. Visit Soccer.com today to check out our unmatched selection of gear, expert advice, and stories of greatness at every level of the game. Welcome back to Breaking the Line, the ECNL podcast. Dean Linky, delighted to be with two of the superstars from the U18-19 Girls National Championship Team Slammers FC, talking about Savannah King and Faith George. This is the time where you guys have to boast a little bit. I want to hear your story, where you grew up. Definitely slide in, Sam, as we'll start with you, Faith, because obviously I know that team really well that he was on because I was with the 92 Olympic team, then the 94 World Cup team, and there are a ton of UCLA Bruins. And immediately when, you know, you told me your story, I was drawn to it. And then, of course, Savannah King's got a wonderful story to share as well. But we'll start with you, Faith, if you can. Talk about when you fell in love with soccer, some of the different teams you've you played on, some big moments, your family, brothers and sisters. Give us everything you can. Okay. I started playing soccer when I was three years old. And pretty much straight from the womb, I was on the soccer field. My older sisters played in the ECNL as well. And my older sister is eight years older than me. So she came into ECNL pretty much right around the time that I was born. So it's been soccer since day one. I played other sports kind of here and there, but I just knew from the get-go that soccer was what I was born to do. Like it just, it felt right. It clicked with me. Um, And I watched my sisters win in high school and then in college. And so it was one of those things that I couldn't like see my life without soccer. And then obviously to my dad, my dad and three of his brothers played college soccer at a high level in division one. So it was just seeing them and my dad talks about him winning the national championship and how it was the best days of his life and how holding the national championship to work to get to the point where I'll be able to hold a trophy over my head that says national championship. So it was really cool being able to do that in high school. So now looking forward, I want to do it in college as well. My whole life has been centered around soccer and how my family has gotten me to be the best soccer player that I can be. And obviously there's still like growth and room to grow and everything, but my whole life has always been on the soccer field. Like literally since I could walk, I was kicking a soccer ball. So it's cool to now say that I'm a national champion in ECNL in that I can carry on my family's legacy. I want to remind everybody that she's talking about Sam George, who won that national championship under Ziggy Schmidt, a team that was loaded with big time talent like Brad Frito and Kobe Jones, Mike Lafford, Joe Max Moore, Chris Henderson, Billy Thompson. The list is endless. This is an unbelievable team, a, a team that was dynastic, quite frankly. Now you're headed to USC. We're going to get to that in a moment. So we, we understand that move as well. And before we do that, though, I also asked about brothers and sisters. What do you got? faith i have three sisters so to start my oldest sister michaela george she played at santa clara under jerry smith played professionally but is now retired and then my other sister gwen she ran track at ucla she just graduated college this past year there's a little bit of a sibling rivalry between me and her just with the ucla usc and then my little sister quincy she does soccer as well but she's really young so it's hard to tell where she's gonna end up that's everyone all right well That's part of the Faith George story. We'll get the decision about going to Southern Cal after we hear more from Savannah King. Savannah, your story is also great on so many levels. You have a twin. You have two moms. As we just came off Pride Month, the ECNL has a lot of pride in the LGBTQ plus community, as I hope you know. So I think that's a great story. I met both your moms. They're brilliant. And I know you're happy to talk about them as well. And then, of course, you're headed to play at the University of North Carolina. But tell us your story. Story, Savannah King. When did you start playing soccer? Were there other sports? Make sure we get your twins' name, your mom's name, everything about you. Okay, so I'll start off with my mom's name. So I have two moms, like he said, Carrie and Kim, and then I have a twin brother. His name is Parker. So my soccer story is a little bit different. I started pretty late. I was 10 when I started, but I played pretty much every sport leading up to that. My first sport was actually flag football. I did baseball and track and pretty much everything in between. I was always out with the boys and my brother on all those teams. So grew up around sports. And then when I was in elementary school, a bunch of kids from my school were playing soccer. And I went to my parents and I was like, I want to try this out. So I went out, made the team for a rec club. And then I got scouted by Real SoCal, which is now LAFC SoCal Youth. So I played for them like my whole life leading up to this past year when I switched over to Slammers. I was a forward when I first started. So I went through like the first couple years as a forward and I was before age groups were a thing and then age group happened. And so we split into like 
05, 04, 06, everything in between. So I'm an 05. So our 04 team for Real SoCal needed an outside back specifically. And they had asked me if I was interested to play that position. And of course I said, yeah. So I've been a defender ever since. So I've been a defender for roughly like a couple years now. That was probably one of the best decisions I ever made. When I was younger, I think I realized that this was a sport just by the people, I think, and just being able to just focus on one sport, I think, because I've been playing so many sports my whole life. And then once I chose soccer, I was like, I, I love soccer. I love going out to practices. I love the games. I love the competition. I love the people. So once I figured out that path and that's what I wanted to do, I really started to like pursue it. And then I was blessed enough to be able to be in youth national team cycles and go to CONCACAFs and World Cups. And those are definitely some of the best experiences of my life. Then to top it all off, being able to play with Slammers and win a national championship was definitely one of the highlights that I've had. And I'm just super, super happy and grateful to be a part of that team. And I know it's something that we had been working for the whole season and we'd all been talking about at the beginning of the season. So for us to be able to lift the trophy was definitely just coming full circle. All right. You're two moms and I found them fascinating and I understand that academia and athletics are a part of their story as well. So tell us that as well. The two moms, I know one of of them was like a big time bicyclist, I think, and maybe a runner. And then another one is a super successful businesswoman. They both might be actually tell the story of your moms. Okay. So one of my moms, her name is Carrie and she was a pro runner and cyclist. So she went pro when she was 18. So she was kind of a crazy athlete growing up, which is why my brother and I were kind of into like the running aspect of it. Cause she was a runner growing up. And then my other mom, she played basketball growing up and they're both super successful academically. They got like most of the degrees that like multiple, like I don't, they got a lot. So they're very successful academically, which is why my brother and I are also like super studious. We do well in school. So my brother's a track and cross country runner. So kind of like do the same thing because I also run track, but not cross country. Very good. And where's your brother going to go to college? He's going to UCSB. Okay, perfect. And then just to fill in the final blank, where do your moms work now? One of my moms works for Dexcom, which is like a diabetes company. And then my other mom works at CSUN and she's part of like the, the academic staff. Okay, very cool. All right. So now we learned a little bit more about Faith and Savannah, who, by the way, did I tell you they are part of the national championship team for East CNL girls U18-19. They did it just last week out in Del Mar, California, just outside of San Diego. All right, Faith, I tease the fact that you're headed to Southern Cal. You already told me that, you know, one of your sisters played for Santa Clara as well. Both of those aren't UCLA. How hard was that not going to UCLA, knowing the legacy that your dad had with the Bruins? It was an easier decision than you would think. I have always wanted to be a little bit outside the box. So, when UCLA was brought into my recruiting discussion, I immediately was kind of like, yeah, UCLA is awesome and great, but my family name would always be overshadowing anything I did at UCLA. So it was kind of like looking at it from that outlook. And I just, I wanted something different growing up. USC was never really like, it was just, it was UCLA, USC. Like I couldn't really bring up USC in my house until I was like being recruited by them. So when USC came to the table and I looked at the school and I was like, wow, this is somewhere I would love to go. It was a super obvious decision for me that USC was a perfect fit. Meeting the coaches and going there and meeting the girls and seeing the way that it was run. It was a super obvious decision for me once I was there that USC is home, which go figure because I was on UCLA's campus my entire childhood, but stepping on like USC's campus and it was just that immediate feeling of this is where I was meant to go to school. It was easier than you might think to turn away from UCLA. This is not about me, but I do love the tie-in to the fact that you're going to be going into the Big Ten a year from now. So I'll be calling your games as I enter my 17th season calling women's soccer for the Big Ten Network. And so in my 18th season, I'll be calling Faith George playing for USC on the Big Ten Network. Are you excited about, I think it's going to be cool for you because you're going to be able to travel like all over the country because of the way the Big Ten has added USC and UCLA. Yeah, I'm pumped. It's going to be 
so cool to see those schools and I'm excited to drag my family along with me because we've all been on the west coast so it'll be so fun for especially my little sister to go see all those east coast schools but I'm so excited to be playing against schools like Penn State, Michigan, Michigan State and seeing all those schools and playing in a league where like it's going to be really hard to win not the Pac-12 is easy at all but like it's going to be like an intense game every single game and it's going to be like a final of a league championship every single game. So I'm so excited to be in a situation where I'm going to be getting better because of the pressure that's being applied to me, every situation. Great answers, Faith. One more here, if you can. Who was number two and three? Can you tell us, like, it came down to the final three. Like, what what two teams just missed out on having Faith George? To be honest, from the beginning of my recruiting, I knew it was going to be between USC and Penn State. So it's funny that I'll be playing against them in the Big Ten. But Penn State was just very attractive to me from a standpoint of I loved the coaches. They were great. And I kind of wanted to go far from home. Funny enough, I ended up 45 minutes down the street. But <laughs> I just, something about Penn State was really cool and drew me to it. But then I like took some time and like reevaluated everything. And then I just realized that there was no place like USC. And that I was just, it was just all the stars aligned when I committed. And it was just made me realize that USC, there's no better place for me than there. But it was Penn State and USC from the beginning. All right. Fantastic. All right. As we know, Savannah King, you're headed to play for the Tar Heels. They've won the national championship 22 times, 21 in the NCAA and one other. You're playing for arguably the most successful college coach, any gender, any sport in Anson Dorrance, somebody I've known since the late 80s. But I got to believe, like Faith, you got letters from every school. Who were your final three choices, Savannah King? I would say, just like Faith, it was kind of down to like the final two. I would say, actually, my second one that I thought I was going to go to was UCLA. I just like... Faith, I grew up at UCLA. I was always at the games. Funny enough, I wanted to stay close to home. So it's pretty much the opposite of her. And I ended up all the way across the country. So those were definitely my final two. My favorite book is Malcolm Gladwell's book called The Tipping Point, because I feel like even my life has had a lot of key moments, key tipping points that have shaped my life, including meeting my wife at the World Cup and soccer has been a key part of it. What for you, Savannah King, was the tipping point to say, I want to be a Tar Heel, even though it's a long way away from your moms and your twin brother? I think that just like what everybody says, when you get to the campus, you just know. And I think that Anson and Damon were just amazing during my recruiting process and they really made it just my experience just so good. And the teammates that were there. And then I know a lot of my classmates going in because I've I've played with them for a couple years now. And I think that just all of everything together was just, I just couldn't say no. And I couldn't stay away from UNC, which is just like their legacy is just absolutely crazy. And to be able to say that I'm playing for Anson Dorrance is just the cherry on top. So I'm just, it was just, I remember being at a showcase in Florida a couple of years ago. And I remember being in the car driving um, with my mom and being like, oh my gosh, North Carolina was at our game. Like that would be crazy if I ended up going there. And then a couple of days later, I got an email and it was just like, whoa, like a couple of days I was just talking about how crazy that would be if I, like if they recognized me. And then a couple of months later, I was on a plane and we were at an ID camp. And ever since then, I just knew that North Carolina was, was the place. And your tipping point, Faith, on making the decision to go to Southern Cal. It was a combination of a couple of things. So obviously Coach Jane, she was my favorite coach during the whole recruiting process. She is fantastic and she's a newer head coach but that didn't deter me from her at all like there was just it like immediately clicked with her so I knew that she was the coach that I wanted to play for they're not as winning as North Carolina I don't think they have however many championships that they have but just two national championships like looking at that I was like okay they've done it before I want to do it again I want to add the third star their support of me as a player from the first call like I knew that they wanted me and they valued me as a player and a person from the beginning. And that was a big deal to me. It was close to home too. So kind of contrary to what I originally wanted, but yeah, it was like a combination of all those things. That was the tipping point for me. Faith George and Savannah King, they are superstars and they are part of the Slammers FC U18-19 ECNL girls national championship team. They just won it 
a week ago and a few days after they are featured on Breaking the Line, the ECNL podcast. They actually play with a rapid fire pace. So we're going to do rapid fire questions with Savannah King and Faith George after we hear from more ECNL sponsors. ECNL Boys is partnering with Puma for the second year, driving sport forward with the leading products and the next generation of pros who wear them. Puma has proven themselves as the fastest sports brand in the world, the fastest innovation, the fastest players, and the fastest products in the game. They're the perfect partner to complement the speed and talent of our teams. In keeping with their mantra of forever faster, Puma introduces the world's fastest boot, the Ultra. The only boot engineered for speed, the Ultra combines a woven upper with a lightweight outsole for direct forward motion, speed, and acceleration. It's the best in the game, designed for the best players in the game. The ECNL is pleased to announce Quick Goal as the official goal provider and partner for ECNL Girls and ECNL Boys, a new partnership created to support the growth and development of the country's top players, clubs, and coaches. At all national events, including national playoffs and national finals, the Quick Goal Coaches Corner will provide hospitality and social space for ECNL girls, ECNL boys, and collegiate coaches. Quick Goal will also be the presenting sponsor of the National National championship winning ECNL Girls and ECNL Boys Coaches of the Year and the ECNL Girls and ECNL Boys Goals of the Year. Quick Goal looks forward to helping the ECNL continue to elevate the standards of youth soccer and provide more opportunities to players on and off the field in the coming years. From athletes just starting to turn heads to some of the best athletes to ever play their games, Gatorade shows that they are the proven fuel of the best. For the athletes who give everything, nothing beats Gatorade, the studied, tested, and proven fuel of the ECNL. Welcome back to Breaking the Line, the ECNL podcast. Dean Linky delighted to be with two superstar soccer players, Savannah King and Faith George for Slammers FC. They won the ECNL U18-19 Girls National Championship just last week out in the San Diego area. Their team was outstanding. Their team is loaded. As we know, Faith George is headed to play for Southern Cal this fall, and Savannah King is headed to Chapel Hill to play for North Carolina. When we went to break, we promised some fun rapid fire questions just to get to know them a little bit better. Some are silly, some have merit. You decide which ones are silly and which ones have merit, but I'm gonna ask you to give it your best shot on all of these questions and we'll kind of rotate who goes first. So we'll start with Savannah going first then Faith. And then the next question, Faith, you go first and then Savannah and we'll follow that all the way through. So Savannah, pressure's on you. Texting or talking? Which one you go with? Texting, calling. All right, Faith, this one is you. Favorite city in the U.S. besides the one you live in? Los Angeles, Chapel Hill. <laughs> All right, now we'll start with Savannah. Your favorite nickname that people call you? Savvy. You can't really nickname Faith, so just Faith. <laughs> Faith, will come back to you. Last song you downloaded. Family Ties by Kendrick Lamar. Probably a SZA song. Savannah, we'll start with you. It's banquet time. How long does it take for you to get ready for a big banquet? Probably an hour. Faith. Two hours, at least. <laughs> All right, awesome. All right, now let's have some fun. And Faith, you go first on this one. Your favorite female athlete, doesn't have to be soccer, favorite female athlete. Amy Rodriguez. Amy Rodriguez, outstanding from Southern Cal. Well done. Savannah, your favorite female athlete? I would say Serena Williams. Ooh, both great answers. I love it. All right, Savannah, you have to go first this time. Favorite male athlete, any sport? LeBron James. Nice. Faith? Erling Holland. Now, Faith, you go first. Favorite family vacation destination? Florida. Savannah? I would say Hawaii. Hawaii. Okay. Savannah, you go first. Favorite junk food? Chocolate. <laughs> Goldfish. This is kind of a weird one that's similar. Cake or pie? We'll start with you, Faith. Cake or pie? Cake. Savannah? Cake, for sure. Of course. We're in the cake generation. Pie generation, that's me, I'm sure. Whose turn is it now? I can't remember. You guys are too quick for me. My, I think. So, Savannah, do you ever post inspirational quotes on social media? Uh, occasionally. More so when I, like, a couple years ago, I would say. But yes. No, because I've never liked posting inspirational quotes. I like them myself, but I don't post them. Favorite ice cream flavor? We'll start with you, Faith. Mint chocolate chip. I would say a tie between mint chocolate chip and cookies and cream. Sticking with food, 
food, your go-to meal is what? If you had to pick one meal, what do you go to, Savannah? Tacos. Tacos. Faith. Italian food. Any Italian food. All right, this one will be interesting because you both live out in this area, and I think, Faith, you have to go first this time. Your favorite Kardashian. Courtney. <laughs> uh, I'm going to admit, I, I don't really watch the Kardashians or know much about them, but I just hear Kim Kardashian's name a lot, so I'll go with that. <laughs> all right I, I, i'm sure we're, all of us are smarter if uh, we watch less of it as well but it's sometimes it's hard to get pulled away for sure all right giving presents or getting presents savannah giving giving faith giving for me as well that figures because you guys are quality people all right i think we already kind of know to the answer this one might be none but i've got to ask it TikTok or Instagram, Faith? TikTok. Okay. Savannah? Say Instagram, believe it or not. I've never had TikTok, so. All right. This one's going to be an easy one, and it's the last one on the rapid fire part, and that is your greatest memory as a soccer player. We'll start with you, Savannah. Oh, my gosh. Making me pick just one. Playing in the World Cup. Okay. Very good. Faith? Uh, mine's not as cool as hers, but I would say winning the state championship in high school and then winning the national championship in ECNL. Amen. And that was just a few days ago as we are with Faith George and Savannah King. Just a couple more questions and we'll let them go. One of the questions that I normally ask to all my guests is, you know, key mentors in your life. And usually that's somebody that uh, has made a difference. Usually it's a soccer coach, particularly because you guys are such high level and high achieving soccer players, but who are some people that, you know, you just could not be where you are without them. And maybe it's just as simple as, you know, your parents, I'm not sure, but Savannah, I'll make you go first here. Who are some key mentors in your life? Definitely my family definitely would not be here without them. And then I've had a couple coaches in my life that have really impacted me. At my old club, it was, his name's Keith West. Uh, he was my coach for a couple of years. And then definitely Shane and the Slammers coaches for sure. And then I have a couple of trainers. One of their names is Tony and then Cody and Colson. And they've been like super prominent people in my life. And I definitely wouldn't be there without them, but definitely the emphasis on the family. Way to be ready for the shout outs. I'm big on shout outs. So Faith, now you have a chance to shout out anybody you want that's made a big difference in your life. My dad has made the biggest influence on my soccer career. Like the amount of hours he spent at the fields with me, it's been ridiculous. There's been like years that you could probably say have been spent in the soccer field with him, but him and just my entire family as well, kind of like savvy. And then there's been a couple coaches along the way. I played for Blues before, so pretty much like the whole Blues coaching staff was really supportive of me. And then coming to Slammers, it's been Shane, like Waleed, Ziad, all of them have been incredible. And then personal trainers, I had a personal trainer last year that was awesome and really helped me. His name was Todd Norman. Um, I didn't train with him for super long and I don't think he knows the impact he had on me, but he had a really big impact on me as well. All right, great so, answer. Yes. Yeah. Oops, sorry, you broke up there. Did I, you said your trainer, um... Who did you say after your trainer, Faith? I'm so sorry. You're good. It's probably my Wi-Fi. Um, but he was super great and impacted me a lot. Two final questions, all right? Savannah, we'll start with you. When you hear these four letters, what do they mean to you? And those four letters are ECNL. Family. Playing club soccer has brought me some of the best people in my life and has taken me places that I just probably would have never gone to. Just like it says, everyone's elite and it brings together so many people. And I think that that's just the most amazing thing for us. Everyone has a love for the game and everyone wants to compete and be the best that they can. And I think that that brings that out in so many different people. It's been like the best years of my life. I've made so many unforgettable memories and met so many people that that I hope to keep in my life forever. Faith George, you hear those four letters, E, C, and L. What does it mean? The competition and being able to showcase my abilities and everything and just having a family to stand behind me and support me as I move on to the next level. And just knowing that there have been so many people in the ECNL that have been rooting for me that I don't even know about. It means a lot to me and it means my childhood and it signifies kind of what I've grown up doing. And like I've learned some of the like my life lessons on the soccer field while playing in the ECNL. So it just means pretty much everything to me as a youth soccer player. Faith and Savannah, I'll end with what I call the if you missed it last word segment and it'll go back to what we're celebrating and we'll start with you faith george you just won the ecnl u18 19 national championship as we end this interview can you put into words what it means to you it means the world it's something you dream about as a little girl growing up so it's just like 
all those hours spent at the field, all those training sessions, all the traveling, like to have it all be wrapped up in a national championship trophy, it's, it means the world. Like I'll always look back on June 29th as the day I won a national championship. I'll tell my kids about it. I'll tell my grandkids about it. So it's just, it means everything to have held up that trophy. Same question, Savannah King. It was just the perfect ending to just such a long history of club soccer. And I think that it was the perfect way. It was like the perfect little bow on top. And it just means absolutely everything. You know, I think everyone's dream is to win a national championship at some point, no matter what, what level that is at. So to be able to hold up that trophy in our last club game together and in the ECN all together is just, it's incredible. And it's, it's hard to put it into words how much that it means, but it, it means absolutely everything and really shows all your hard work into one thing. And we all wanted that. So for us to be able to take it home as a family and to be able to celebrate that together in our, in our last game was, was really special. I felt connected to both of you early on, and I always believe in good karma, your stories and your connections to the work I do on the Big Ten Network with you, Faith, and then knowing what Sam did at UCLA, and then you, Savannah, coming to where I live and have lived since 1999 in Chapel Hill and having worked with Anson Dorrance long before you were born, and then for you to have that kind of connection and then go out and play lights out, it was so much fun for me. It's why I love my job because I get to call some of the best athletes in the world and you two are in that category. So with that, I say thank you. Really enjoyed getting to know you then and now everybody gets to know you a little bit better. Faith George, thanks for being on Breaking the Line, the ECNL podcast. Thank you so much for having me. It was awesome. Savannah King, thank you so much for being on Breaking the Line, the ECNL podcast. Thank you so much. It was great. I loved it. I loved it too. Savvy King and Faith George, part of the Slammers U18-19 ECNL Girls National Championship. So many people to thank at the ECNL that I'm worried that I'm going to miss some of them. Andrea Wheeler and her entire staff were incredible. Hung out with Griffin and Ryan and Jeremy and, of course, my broadcast partner for the ECNL Girls U18-19 National Championship game was Emily Harrigan, who used to play at Rutgers and Pitt. I certainly enjoyed that part of it and so many others. Then seeing Blaine Fink and Christian Lavers and Ralph Richards and the new associate commissioner for both boys and girls, Mr. Leahy, who I interviewed at halftime and so many others. Too many to count, but want to thank all of them. Definitely want to thank my producer, Colin Thrash. And for each and every one of them and all of you, I'm Dean Linky. Thanks for listening to Breaking the Line, the ECNL podcast. We'll see you in two weeks. Thanks for listening to Breaking the Line, the ECNL podcast. For more information on the ECNL, visit us at www.vecnl.com. And if you have a suggestion for the show or a great idea for a guest, please email us at info at theecnl.com. Breaking the Line, the ECNL podcast is an ECNL production. ECNL, more than a league.